This is the Ant Router R1 BTC, and what this is, is this is basically a little wireless router that was released by Bitmain back at the end of 2015. And you can see we've got a USB port, we've got an Ethernet port, and basically what you can do with this is this can act as a wireless router. If you plug your modem directly into this, this can actually replace your router if you only need Wi-Fi. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can make this a wireless bridge and connect this to an existing Wi-Fi hotspot. Gives you an Ethernet port. But the key difference with this is it actually has a Bitmain ASIC mining chip on the inside of it. That means we are able to hash away on SHA-256 using this unit. Now, when this unit released, the firmware that was loaded on it could only solo mine to Bitmain's mining pool. Meaning if you want to solo mine to your own node, you're not able to with the factory firmware. So we're going to pop in a, in the dashboard here in a minute. And I'm going to show that to you. The USB port, this is actually used to hook up a USB uh, Bitmain miner, in particular the U3. So there was a Bitmain Amp Miner U3 unit that was released. Uh, I unfortunately do not have one. I'm still on the hunt trying to find one. So if you guys have uh, any sources that might have a, youth, a working U3, definitely let me know. I would like to cover it on this channel and actually plug it into this unit. This is a working unit. Uh, big shout out to Alex, Geek of All Trades, for sending it over. Um, he actually sent over this to me, and he also sent over a SIA. Uh, ant router, which is the newer gen of the ant routers. These are the ones that look like the clocks. I may cover this in a future video. Right now, you can't really do anything with this miner uh, since the algorithms have all kind of forked off. This was released before SIA did the uh, SIA kind of fork of the algo. So we're still trying to figure out um, a specific coin we might have to spin one up that we can use this on but we will hopefully be covering that in a future video uh, for today we're just talking about the ant mine or the ant router r1 btc they did release four versions of this this is the btc version there's also a litecoin version a dash version and a sia version but what we're going to do today is we're going to get this thing hooked up I'm going to show you how to set up. I'm going to show you how to put a custom firmware on it so that we can actually configure our own pools to use it. And then we can should be able to solo mine. So you guys are probably familiar. I'm running a solo mine series on how to solo mine on your home network. And we're going to solo mine uh, a not as popular coin, probably maybe like peer coin or something like that. So to get this thing set up, all we are going to do, we're going to plug it in to the wall outlet, plug an Ethernet cable, go to the IP address of the unit, and then uh, all we need to do is then configure our Wi-Fi connection. So if you take a look here, the once you plug it in, the IP address you're going to go to is 192.168.200.1. Once you do that, then all we're really going to do is we're just going to connect it to Wi-Fi. Now I've already connected this unit to Wi-Fi. So I'm not going to go through the steps of that, but I will show you that on the web UI. And then we're going to flash a custom firmware. The cool thing with flashing the custom firmware, it retains the old settings. So if you connect it to Wi-Fi and then flash the firmware, you don't have to reconnect it to Wi-Fi. It'll persist all of those settings through. And I will cover kind of what the custom firmware does and why we are running that. Once we've got it connected to the Wi-Fi, we're gonna go to the IP address of that unit and the default username is gonna be uh, root, default password is gonna be root. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna head on over to the system tab. And then we're gonna go to backup flash firmware. And we're gonna restore from a backup. Now, the custom firmware that we're using is not a firmware image per se. It's actually a backup of the OEM firmware with some modifications to it. To get the firmware, 
you're going to head on over to github.com slash bitrust slash antrouter dash r1 dash firmware. These are the firmwares. Now, there is a link to the Bitcoin Talk forum post where this was originally released, but they're hosted on GitHub for you to download as well. And this R1 CG custom firmware, this is what we're going to be downloading and applying. And we take a look here and look at the instructions. They tell you clearly, make sure you do restore backup. Don't do flash new firmware because it's not a full binary firmware file. But that is what we're going to do. So we're going to say restore from backup. After we've downloaded the file, let's go ahead and download that real quick. It's going to redirect you over to Omega. You can go ahead and hit download. And we're going to save that. And then we're going to hit choose file. We're going to go ahead and select that firmware. Hit upload archive. And once it's uploaded, it should redirect you back to the login page. Let's go ahead and log in again. Now if we head on over to the minor tab, we now have a R1 minor configuration tab that allows us to actually configure our own stratum connections. So previously, all that you could really configure was just the kind of the connection to the ant router network um, or bitmain's solo network but now we've unlocked the ability to specify our own pools we've also unlocked the ability to overclock the unit so we can overvolt or undervolt if we want and we can adjust the frequency so now all we need to do, and you can see before we configure that, you see we've got R1 menus and we've got U3 menus. So the U3 configuration, this will allow you to specify pools for that USB U3 miner if you plug it into the router. And then this is where you can see the logs for the U3. Obviously we don't have a U3, so there's no hash rate. The R1 is the actual unit itself. It's actually hashing away right now um, at CK pool on what appears to be a dev wallet from whatever was in that backup file. So now we want to make sure we adjust these to our own pool information. So to do that, um, I'm actually already running uh, as part of my solo mining series. I'm running NOMP with Peercoin. So that's actually what we're going to do. We're going to do getting started. You hit peer coin and uh, we actually want so this is running port three uh, sorry uh, 3003 so we're gonna do 192 dot it's actually right there already and then we're gonna go ahead and put in our peer coin address I believe that is my peer coin address and if we have failover pools we're gonna put those in there as well I'm just going to actually blank out all of these I'm not gonna specify Failover pools right now, but I will do that later. Uh, typically what I like to do is set these to other mining pools, maybe like mining Dutch, things like that. So if my network does go offline for whatever reason, that it will continue to hash away, but it'll hash over there. But for us, we're gonna be solo mining to our local node uh, that is running on NOMP. And I'm gonna just hit save and apply here. And if we hop on over to the pull logs, we can see it did authorize the worker and it's sending a bunch of shares right now. And so if we hop back on over here and we go to R1 minor status, it is hashing away. It is still ramping up. I believe we'll get around five and a half giga hash uh, on this ASIC chip. So obviously that is still ramping up, but you can see that we have 19 accepted shares. So right now, and is hashing away. If we give that a refresh, you can see our average is 5.67 or five second. Again, this will ramp up after five minutes or so and should be uh, really around that five and a half giga hash. You can see it's still ramping up. Uh, but we do have 65 accepted shares, uh, no rejects or anything. So this is hashing away at our pool. And if we hop on over to the pool and we get a table sets, we can see we now have one worker connected on peer coin. So we're just gonna let this thing hash away and see if we hit a block 
Uh, it's very unlikely we will hit a block, uh, but we have a lot better odds at this than we would with like Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, especially only having five and a half giga hash. But the thing uses virtually no power whatsoever. So I'm going to leave this on Peercoin. If we hit a block, I think right now a Peercoin block is worth around 16 US dollars. Uh, if it's like 36.36 .36 peer coin, something like that. So we're just going to let this thing hash away and see if we ever hit a block. As of right now, the calculation is sitting around 88 years is what it would take us to get to 36 peer coin if we were pool mining. So let's get let's let it sit for a few months and see if we can maybe get lucky and hit a block. Be awesome.